Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. My name is Tony Roig. I am your host of this weekly podcast. In this podcast, we are going to look at why pickleball therapy. In other words, what's the reason to get pickleball therapy? And I have to give a shout out here to uh, Jennifer from our Better Pickleball team who turned me on to this thinking, right? So she asked me, we were chatting about the podcast and and uh, the direction it was headed and things like that. And she says, well, why, you know, what's the point of the podcast? What are you trying to do? So it got me to thinking, I made some notes and I want to share them with you because I think it's helpful here uh, for for all of us who listen to this podcast, who are part of this podcast, uh, the Pickleball Therapy family, if you will, um, to just refresh what it is that we're trying to accomplish through these podcasts as me as your host and you as the listener of the podcast. So uh, I made some notes, so I'm going to uh, read them to you now and, and see what you think about it. Let me know at therapy at betterpickleball.com if this resonated with you in terms of uh, pickleball therapy and uh, why we come together on a weekly basis, if not more, uh, to get some pickleball therapy. And so uh, first question I ask myself is, why does pickleball therapy exist? So, you know, pickleball is awesome, right? But it's more than just a sport that we play. Pickleball is part of us, right? It's like family. There are, however, forces that can undermine our relationship with pickleball, whether it's a loss of perspective, a sense of no longer belonging, or just noise. We can find ourselves feeling less than, put that in quotes, right? We can feel, find ourselves feeling quote unquote, less than about our pickleball. The enthusiasm and love we felt for pickleball can be dulled. Our relationship with pickleball is important to us. Pickleball therapy is here to help us strengthen this relationship and to help us defend it, defend the relationship against potentially damaging influences. So that's, that's you know, in a nutshell, why we created pickleball therapy. We know pickleball is super important for you as a, not just as a player, for you as a person, as a human being. Pickleball becomes a super important part of, of our lives and how we uh, interact with the world. And a lot of the joy that we get out of the world can come from pickleball. But there are forces, and I'll talk about those in a, in a little bit more in a, in a minute. Some of those are internal, some are external. And so we designed pickleball therapy to help strengthen us. Uh, against those negative forces, against those negative uh, influences that can undermine our very important relationship with pickleball, and that's the that's the objective of this podcast. Now, there's different components to strengthening, right? Sometimes it means strengthening our minds, right, in terms of our perspective and and knowing that um, that you know that no one can really take this away from us unless we allow them to. Those types of things, right? That's internal strength. Uh, uh, mental strength, and then there's just uh, you know being more competent as pickleball players, both in knowledge and in execution, uh, will give us more confidence. And the more confident we are, the less likely we are to to uh, slide into feeling less than right, which is what we're trying to avoid. So, uh, reading some more pickleball therapy episodes focus on the mental aspects of our pickleball. We share tools and concepts that. You can use to maintain a healthy and productive perspective with the sport that you love. And let me define the problem for you a little bit, and then I'll pro- I'll provide to you what I believe is a solution to that problem. Uh, at least in you know on paper, it's harder to implement, but on paper, this is what I think happens. So sometimes the problems are this: pickleball players become dissatisfied with the sport they otherwise love. And dissatisfaction can be, and remember I mentioned it can be internal, external, so it can come from themselves, right? Themselves as a player. And it's, you know, I can't, I just can't get this, right? I'm not, I'm not good enough. I can't, you know, I, I, I'm stuck. I can't improve. I can't, you know, it's all on, I can't, right? Um, then on sometimes dissatisfaction could come from results, right? I'm always losing. I can't get better, right? So that's a results-oriented thing. But right, basically, I'm I'm tying it to some external um, results-driven metric. Or dissatisfaction can come from a, a, a loss of identity in terms of our place in the game, right? So this is our interaction with pickleball, and that comes from you know like a lack of confidence can be a big source of that sort of problem. So solutions can come from. Uh, 
improve perspective, right? Example there would be uh, winning is a bad metric, right? Is a good way of changing your perspective with the game, right? And saying, um, you know, I am, uh, you know, that win loss doesn't make sense. I can throw that out the door. Uh, that's a better perspective, a better approach on how we come to the game. We could also improve um, our perspective or perspective by um, focusing on the reasons why we play, right? You know, we don't play to come and win a bunch of games. We could play because of social or exercise or whatever it is. That's a really good way of refocusing ourselves in terms of uh, our perspective. Um, uh, so improved perspective is one solution. Improved play is another so solution, which is, uh, you know, things that we can do to reduce the anxiety when we're out on the court. Um, sometimes that's perspective and play. You know, all these have some overlap. But for instance, when you're playing, knowing that no one else has time for your business, meaning like, you know, no one's really paying attention to what you're doing out on the court, even though we think that there's a spotlight on us every time we make a mistake, Um not true. You know, the other players have the same th thoughts going through their heads, so they're not really worried about you. And so just knowing that, right, can improve your calmness while you're playing, which will improve how you play. Um, also, just, you know, improving your your focus when you're out there can can help um, because you're focusing on things that will help you actually play pickleball as opposed to focusing on noise uh, out on the pickleball court. Uh, so improved play can help uh, be part of the solution. And then improved progress, right? feeling like you're growing, right? Avoiding distractions, staying on the path to, to your uh, success, to your improvement, uh, to your progress. Th those are different ways that you can solve or strengthen yourself against what is going to be normal, right? Meaning, you know, these, these forces that are going to batter you sometimes when you're playing. If you become better at your perspective, better at your play, and better at your progress, right? Better in the game, then you're going to be a stronger player, not just in terms of your results, right? Not just in terms of level and how well you play when you're when you're out there, but in terms of your ability to withstand these potentially undermining forces that can exist out there. And lastly, I want to leave you with this. This is uh, you know, for folks who I jotted down as to who pickleball therapy is for. Um, pickleball therapy is for players who want a fuller and deeper relationship with pickleball. And we use that term relationship uh, very conscientiously, very intentionally. Um, you know, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, pickleball for us, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you're not a casual player. You're not just showing up on a Thursday once a month and hitting the ball around. You are serious about pickleball in the sense that it is an important part of your life. So you have a relationship with pickleball. It goes beyond just what happens on the court. Um, pickleball therapy is for players who are feeling dissatisfied with themselves or their place in the game. You know, we, we try and provide a safe harbor where you can come in here. You know that, you know, there's no judgment in here. There's no criticism in here. Uh, it's all about helping you grow uh, as a pickleball player, grow in your relationship. Pickleball therapy is for players who want to continue improving or growing in the game. Um, pickleball offers a great opportunity to us, right, to, to continue our growth, to continue our development. Um, you know, there's there's no such thing as, you know, it, we're a tool to learn or we're a tool to change and that's nonsense um you know you keep going and keep keep growing um uh, as long as you want to pickleball will have something to teach you and the pickleball therapy is for players who want a healthier and stronger mental game i i'm generally um i i try not to use the term stronger mental game uh it, because it can be confusing sometimes what i mean by stronger mental game here is is ability to withstand adversity uh, and potential negative influences out there. Not, you know, the I'm going to win, rah, 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 you know, 140% and things like that, stronger. So, uh, but definitely, you know, you can develop a healthier and stronger mind, right, relative to your pickleball. And what's kind of cool is that the stronger you get in in working and using pickleball as your as your arena right to develop as your gym to work on this the stronger your mind will be uh in every aspect of your life um you know when you go to the supermarket and and the person in front of you takes out the checkbook i've never used this one before so hopefully you don't take out if you take out a checkbook at the supermarket no judgment it's fine but you know what i mean you know when you're, you're in a rush and and things slow you down or uh you know uh you're expecting a call from someone and you don't get it or whatever happens uh you'll have a much stronger mental base from which to um, 
deal with those situations, which pickleball and life as well will throw your way. So, uh, so those are just some thoughts as to pickleball therapy and and why pickleball therapy exists. But more importantly for you, it's why pickleball therapy is important to you. You know why maintaining a connection with pickleball therapy is something that um, if it's being helpful to you, please continue it because that's what pickleball therapy is all about. And we always close our podcast by saying, if you enjoyed the podcast, share with your friends because you enjoy it, they probably will too. I have it memorized, so I can say it pretty quickly. Uh, and the reason we do that is because we, um, you know, we believe that pickleball therapy uh, can provide help to players who uh, meet the criteria that I mentioned, the four criteria that I mentioned there. Um, and so if you know somebody who is into pickleball and um, could benefit from this sort of um, conversation, this sort of therapy at the end of the day, uh, then uh, sharing it with them is a gift that you can give to them. Uh, and it's it's as podcast, just give, give me a little inside scoop here. It's not easy to get our podcast in front of players who don't know about the podcast. And what I mean by that is like, you know, if there's a player out there who we don't know, they don't know us, and you know, how are they going to see the podcast? You know, maybe on a Facebook post or, you know, we don't have billboards in every city. We, you know, it's just not feasible, right? So the, the, the most realistic way that a player is going to hear about pickleball therapy is from another player. And so if you feel strongly about pickleball therapy, um, again, we ask you to remember it. And uh, if you uh, are so inclined to share with somebody else who you see that's having a struggle, that's having a moment, because sometimes um, that help can be the difference between the, you know keeping them in the game, a game that they love, a game that they can continue growing in, or them becoming dissatisfied and, in extreme cases, leaving the sport of pickleball. So that's why we are so passionate about uh, sharing these messages and also uh, asking you continually to uh, spread the message about, about pickleball therapy. Uh, one last note, if uh, there's a... Uh, an important aspect to pickleball therapy that I missed in this podcast or in my notes, you know, in terms of like who it, who it, who pickleball therapy is for, what type of player, the problems that, that you're facing, the solutions that you think might help it and things like that. Let me know. Send me a, uh, a uh, an email at therapy at better pickleball.com. Those emails land directly in my, my uh, inbox. They are not, uh, they don't go to a support team or anything like that. They go directly to my inbox. So if you want to reach out to me and let me know uh, what pickleball therapy means to you or um, you know that you're a certain type of player or certain, we're in need of something that I didn't mention, that would be uh, good to know because uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, we do our best to bring to you a podcast that we believe will help you in your journey as pickleball players and strengthening that relationship. Uh, but at the end of the day, the reason we make this podcast is for you. So the better we know what's going on out there with you, the better we can um, prepare the podcast to hopefully help as best we can. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and a refresher on why pickleball therapy matters. And uh, I'll see you at our next podcast.